Let's imagine a really good network. Wait, but what is a good network? What do we want from a network? Well, we want it to be fast, that is, allow fast communications. We don't want to wait long for a message to get from one host to another. It should also be reliable. When sending a message, we want the receiver to actually receive it. The network should be extendable, allow more devices to join. We wouldn't want to start with two computers and then not being able to add a third one. The network should support different devices and connections. It should be able to connect a wired PC, wireless laptop, and a cell phone, for instance. And we want many other things. In order to simplify things and make networks flexible, the communication is divided into layers. Each layer has its own responsibility. It provides services to an upper layer and uses services provided by a lower layer. Let's consider the following example. We have two layers. Layer 1 is responsible for transmitting data between hosts that are directly connected to each other. In this diagram between hosts A and B, or between hosts B and C. Layer 2 is responsible for transmitting data between distant hosts. In this diagram between hosts A and C. What did we gain from this division? Well, we gained flexibility. Each layer can be developed and implemented by different people. The upper layer doesn't care about the implementation of the lower layer or vice versa. For instance, the connection between hosts A and B is a Wi-Fi connection, while the connection between hosts B and C consists of a carrier pigeon. These are completely different implementations of layer 1. Developers of layer 2 don't need to bother themselves with this difference. At this layer, Host A needs to know that in order to reach host C, it first needs to send a message to host B. Then host B will forward it to host C. This way, layer 2 is only responsible for finding the route to send the message. It uses the service provided by layer 1, transmitting data between directly connected hosts. Now that we understand why we need layers, we can go on to learn about the layers that are actually used in networks. In the next video, we'll get to know the 5 layers model.